Even though I think the world has woken up a bit more to the fact that women really are here and we are ready to be more involved and ready to have a, a bigger part. It hasn't all changed overnight. And so it's wonderful to see an event like this where you're surrounded by all these inspiring and powerful women who are not afraid to say, yes, I am doing great, interesting things. And to remind us that even though sometimes maybe at work or out in the world, you feel like you're in a minority, um, it's so nice to be surrounded by these women who are facing similar things and realize that more and more people are really waking up to this and trying to do something about it. Voice technology is accessible in the sense that you can build on a platform like Google Assistant, anyone is allowed to build on it and publish an action that the whole world can use. And so if you can learn how to do the necessary coding and design, you can create these things and put them out in the world and anybody can use them. And it's to me a very kind of equalizing way to get this technology out there. Part of my job is to let people know that there is this thing called conversation design. It's a design discipline that should be applied anytime you're building a voice or conversational thing, whether it's on the Google Assistant or, or anywhere. And the point of it is to say that no matter what you're building, you have to think about who is the person using it and you have to apply these principles of conversation. Just like humans have rules about how we talk, we have to take those rules and apply them to the technology that we have today. I think that first moment when you have that first back and forth uh, where it's speaking and you're talking back is a super pivotal, exciting moment where your brain kind of goes, wait a minute, and it starts opening up all these possibilities and ideas of things you can do. Plug in all my gadgets in my house with that and you know just do commands <laughs> and not even you know worry about, oh, I have to get up from you know on my couch and press that button. Maybe I should enable everything from Google Assistant. So. You know, uh, good, good learning. I think I can do that now. <laughs> so I'm here to brainstorm, get ideas, be inspired for my work, um, but also for myself as well. Working with Actions on Google, I'm really looking forward to um, keeping my, my mother actually in mind. Um, so the Google Assistant obviously is creating access to folks to just like streamline work in a lot of ways. And my mother, who is an immigrant from the Dominican Republic, into the United States, just thinking of her and how I can make something more accessible to her. She has access to a phone, however, she doesn't really have much access to the applications and the ease that applications can bring due to the language barrier um, and also the knowledge barrier when it comes to working with technology and how fast it's um, becoming so innovative. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to creating something that will benefit her and many women who also are experiencing some holdbacks from technology like she is. So I went to the tech workshop where we programmed the Google Assistant and I have been learning to program. I decided to dive into the technical workshop um, even though I'm really not that great. I thought that they were all going to be pro coders walking in there and it turns out that we were kind of all in the same boat and helping each other out. So I read the description before I came to a workshop and that described that it is a little bit related to NLP and how you would understand the language itself. I have never developed the application myself uh, previously but it's definitely an interesting space where it's growing and the workshop was well documented online and I had fun doing it and I think I'll definitely continue on.